Hello and welcome to the YCG Podcast. Well, I'm Kyle Oliver. <laughs> I'm Matt Connor. And I'm Justin Bell. Another immaculate intro. Yeah, yeah. it's very clean. Mm-hmm. Today we are going to be, uh, you know, recording. And today is the 7th of January. We made the long, oppressive mm-hmm. trek back mm-hmm. to this Yu-Gi-Oh! realms. And what have we found? We found this new pack the coming longest. out. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Ever. We took this oppressive path and we found yet more oppression. Episode um, 163. I just wanted to take a second... Uh, to thank everybody who it has and is listening to our mm. podcast, you know, maybe you're mm. driving to work or you know, working outside, working out, running, working out. Exactly. Uh, you have spent a lot of time with us, and you know it's been a pretty one-sided conversation. You know, us talking to you and you giving your time to listen to what we have to say, and I just think that's amazing, and I really appreciate it. Yeah. Surprising. Boom. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, today we are going to be talking about... What is it? Bosch? Bosch! Bosch. The Breakers of Shadows. And what we've been doing. Oh. I want to be talk about what we've been doing first, because that's... Oh, gosh. That is what I'm most... I don't even know how long it's been, so I don't know what I did in between all the things. It's been like a, a month and a half. Do not... Pay no attention to... Obvious songs from Justin's phone. Yes. Mm. Just know that we understand. And we sympathize. No, no. Matt doesn't understand yet. Well, I guess I don't. Un- oh. He hasn't played. Oh. <laughs> wow. Undertale stuff. Yeah. Uh, whoa, you said it. <sighs> well, now that we're not trying to plug that. Then. We're not trying to plug that here. No, we're not. No, I mean, maybe after it's over, maybe. Mm. Yeah, we've been but uh, we've what have we been doing? Yeah. Matt. I have played two decks. Oh. Well, no, that's not true. Um, oh. So I started playing Atlanteans because I thought discarding oh. and water monsters sounded fun. Yeah. Did and you I, see the new one? I didn't, the I didn't use the new prince that Sounds does three things. The winner. I just wanted to see if I could make a deck that was fun with just Atlanteans and my play style, and it didn't work. Okay. It was not fun. What was your play style? I don't. Strategy? What did you I, try? I don't know. Are you right. talking about the king of Yu-Gi-Oh? The King of Yu-Gi-Oh? The Prince of no, Yu-Gi-Oh? Prince. That card's not even... Like, Yu-Gi-Oh has reached a place where a card that would have broke the game if we had got it at the same time as Japan is literally just negligible. Yeah, that card's good. And that's what? it. It's negligible. That's how good it is. Oh, I'm scared now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... On like, this remember, computer that I have, it was, I can't It seems go like maybe there. two months ago you're complaining that ge- that card's gonna break Yu-Gi-Oh? And it's, then... Here, I'll, I'll make it. I'll make it hurt even more. Here's what I'm gonna say: Noden doesn't matter. Oh, uh, what? Does, that's how. That's how far you guys come. I don't care about Norden. It's not broken. Yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. Like Instant Fusion is almost like a balancing factor for worse decks. Wow. That's okay. how good Yu-Gi-Oh is. That's 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 what I actually think right now. Like I, uh, if I wanted things to go back to being amazing, then I obviously would like. Yeah, let's tone that back a little bit, but. As it is now, I don't think I'm not going to be able to compete with another deck unless we have things is like Cyber that. Dragon Infinity, like at the cutting edge of like destroying. It's, it's not out there. yet, but yeah, it's pretty much if your deck can't summon it, your deck better be amazing. It's the bee's knees. It's, just, it's at the bleeding edge it's, of UTI breaking it's, technology. It's yeah. great removal. Yeah, it's like that's the best, the best part. Like it's so it's good. It's both. You go first, summon that win, and oh, you go second, summon that, eat their field, and win. Like, yeah, it's both amazing. It's amazing offensive, defensive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And you get to use it so much, and it just pays for itself. Mm-hmm. And it's half the time it's free. So yeah. Cyber Dragon Infinity, in case you are unaware, is a rank six Cyber Dragon monster. I think it requires like three sixes if you do it the, that way. Three sixes, or you can plop it on top of uh, Cy- Nova Cyber Dragon. Cyber Dragon Nova. Cyber Dragon Nova. Which was the structure deck rank five, requiring two level five machines. Mm-hmm. Or... Or you can summon the Teller Knight Ptolemaeus with three mm. material, detach three, and summon Cyber Dragon Nova on it. Mm. Yep. Woo. Two ways to play. And then Infinity. And then Infinity, yep. That's the. the when we're talking about meta decks, that's the ideal turn one. How dare like, they make three, any fours. deck able to summon yeah. it? Any, you can convert three level four monsters into Cyber Dragon Infinity. I know. I was going to be okay with Cyber Dragon Infinity if it didn't escape the Cyber Dragon archetype, but then it just did. Yeah, yeah. Be, I think I'd be totally fine with it. Because that's like, 
I don't know, the, the, the amount of effort you had to put in to do a rank 5, mm -hmm. and then the power that you get out of it, that's pretty reasonable, especially mm -hmm. compared to the power creep of decks just generally. Mixed with the somewhat awkwardness of the Cyber Dragon arc. Yeah, and you can play around the card. It's mm -hmm. not like it's, like, unkillable. Mm -hmm. like, I'm always a little upset when like, I'm playing the, the bot on DevPro, and it's just as, like, card I need to negate, followed by Regeki, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay, whatever. I mean, they yeah. got rid of it. Yeah. The Ptolemyus, the Merchant of Death. Yeah, that card got banned in the OCG, so Good. they're in a better place. Oh, I want to be there. Uh, I don't know if I want to be there. Oh. It's still somewhere. I mean, it's still the OCG. They're fighting back the Kaijus. The, fighting back they don't the even have that. So. They're with their amazing cards. Oh, the Kaiju. The new Kaiju card is actually impressive. But once again, I drop not, in the bucket. <laughs> not, not Cyber Dragon Infinity. Yeah, they're, they're not. There's more than the Infinity. Like, the Infinity isn't what makes that deck. The, the best deck, the best deck. It's just, like, every deck can summon three fours. It just makes the game really degenerate, because yeah. every deck can summon Cyber Dragon Infinity. Pendulum Monsters <laughs> allow you to do whatever you want. Yosenju Kaijus became stronger Kaiju. somehow. I don't know, maybe. Well, I don't know. Uh, Converting three Yosenjus, that's really costly. Why not just summon three free level fours and convert them into a Cyber Dragon Infinity? Oh. But uh, Kaijus are good against Cyber Dragon Infinity. Good news. Woo! Because you eat it. Yay! When you told me that Cyber Dragon could be used with Dynamis, which I also played. I played Dynamis after oh, yeah. Atlanteans. Because oh, yeah. they can summon Nova. Yeah, they, they can. They can just normal, they can legitimately summon Nova. Yeah, they're Dynamis are uh, level 4 and level 5 machine type monsters. Water? They all are water. all water. Mm -hmm. They're all water. They come from the mist, and then they disappear in the mist, and they're pendulum arc types, so all of their monsters... Deck? No, not The extra deck is 15. actually the mist. The extra deck and the pendulum zones are mist. Is that no, they don't. Well, they're pendulum monsters. So. Yeah. As you may or may not be aware, when a pendulum monster would be sent from the field in the zone, or the monster card zone, the pendulum zone, the monster card zone, it will be go to the extra deck face up instead of the graveyard. Mm. Hand destruction, salvage. No. None of them are under 15. <laughs> oh, really? So they can't be picked back up. They start at 16 and go higher. Oh, wow. And I love me some Plessy. Plessy is so good. Is Plessy. that one of them? Dynamist Plesiosaur. Okay. I was thinking there's multiple Plesiosaurus it's, it's monsters. Lapras. It's Lapras. Okay. I was thinking of the, uh, with, like, the mechanical Plesios Ple Plesiosaurus. Is that Master what Diamond Diamondodon. No, it's just a level 5 monster. The Great Megalothrash and Thrash. Plessy I'm going to look it up in my, my thingy. All right. Plus. Plesiodon. There it is. Mecha Sea Dragon Plesion. That's Me what I was yes. thinking. There we go. That's what I was thinking, too. I just didn't know what it was, what it was called. But you were thinking Dynamist Plesios. Dynamist Plesios, which I call Plessy because it's like Nessie. Because it's like the Nessie. There's a Plesios in Monster Hunter. He was awesome. But uh, Dynamists are great. They're really straightforward. They're all pendulums. They're really easy to use. And the more you have of them, the less options your opponent has to attack over you, which is cool because they focus on the battle phase. They're like what you wanted Gladiator Beast to be without being like really... I was like, Gladiator Beast are amazing. See, I keep thinking, like, oh, I can go back to Gladiator Beast, but that keeps being a new reason to not. Yeah. One of the biggest new reasons to not is like one of their greatest assets was uh, War Chariot. Yeah. Everybody has War Chariot. Everybody that. literally has a better card than War Chariot. Or they just completely avoid, they don't care about War Chariot. Yeah. Oh. So, like, uh, oh, you counter trap destroy me? That's fine. I so, get destroyed and I get it? more stuff. Next set, it's called, uh, what was it? Solemn Strike. Solemn Strike. What the Solemn heck? Strike, it's going to be a secret where it's going to be worth like a million dollars because you need three. It's the new warning. This is better than warning, basically. Much less, it's less costly. So uh, pay 1500 negate the special summon of monsters or monsters. Oh, that one. So it negates, uh, black, negates like Blackhorn style, except unlike Blackhorn, it can negate multiple summons at the same time, aka Pendulum Summon. Oh, yeah. And then, or negate the activation of a monster effect and destroy it. Oh, uh, yeah. Baby. So if you're doing something with monsters, this card strikes you. Bring back burn. That's what I said. I mean, they get, to, they get to do uh, this because Solemn is at one. Like, warning is at one, so they can just make this card and it's fine. Yeah, but it's such a bad card for the game. As as Japan has shown us, instant 
three of staple in every deck oh, that of exists. Course. Like it's like way There's too good. There's no reason not to. It eliminates monsters card diversity. Effects. I think it it just seems like a card that should automatically be lab one. But it oppresses equally. just because you can't. It's like it's so good and so versatile. There's not like any deck that this doesn't affect. Mm. Yep. Other than a deck that only tribute summons by only like nor- slowly normal summoning and tribute summoning over itself. I mean, even then. But those monsters have to have effects. Yeah, if they activate a monster effect, like, then you still lose that uh, th- those cards. So there's like it does. There's no deck that th- gets around it. Yeah. They're either special summoning giant vanillas and you're negating the summon, so it doesn't that it works that way, or they no. have monster effects. Stormforth. And then activate Kai's effect, negate, destroy. Isn't there like a mon- a uh, card that makes it so monarchs their tribute summon are ineffective by other cards? Um, oh, possibly. Yeah, but I would be surprised. We're, say we're gonna get a monarch structure deck in the future. Oh, the you monarchs are silly. But they're the, so you know what's silly. awful? They're not gonna be good. What, they've already stuff? even power creeped out of existence. Really? Yeah. Mm, just in time for the B rally. I mean, people are predicting a ban list soon. Hmm. By the way, our next regionals is soon, like really soon. Washington's. Yeah. Yeah, it's in two weeks. Mm. But we're gonna have to deal with like if, if there's no ban list, it's gonna be like the worst. Mm. The well, we pack comes out on the fifteenth. I have the day requested off. Oh, I'll go. <sighs> cool. I don't know if I ever requested off, but I'll go. Mm. I'll go. I'll I'll summon as many birds as I can. I mean, uh, my two options for <laughs> decks are birds. build yeah, bird. one myself or scrounge to get Dynamis stuff in time, which I people will give it to you. Other than Infinity, other than Infinity, yeah, because all the Dynamis stuff in Japan was like rare, and then Rex, their like. "Quote unquote boss monster is probably going to be a super, maybe an ultra. Can we check on this? Okay. Which one's Rex? Is that the fusion? The there's no fusion. Oh, that's it's a else. level five. It's just Dino Mist Rex. As far as I'm aware, oh, it's a super. The highest rarity one is yes, yeah, this one right super here. rare. Yeah, so that's that's fine. Oh, I was thinking of a different card that's like a pseudo Dino Mist. I hope they don't have Dynamis spells and traps that are ultras. That would be unfortunate. I don't know. Uh, where's the pseudo guy? Oh, Dynaster, the powerful, mighty Draco Slayer. That's a card. I think cool he was good. I don't remember what he does, though. He, you're supposed to. He's a Draco Slayer card, mm. technically. But he looks. He's definitely. So, in each set, we get one Draco Slayer, one extra deck monster, and sometimes a spell trap. And it's, the extra deck monster is a combination of a Draco Slayer. And an archetype that came out in that pack. Mm. And this guy's a combination of obviously Dynamist and the Dragon Slayer. But uh, what is he? You tribute, you don't fusion with Polly, you just tribute a Dragon Slayer and a Pendulum Monster. And any special from your extra deck. And then Pendulum Monsters you control, and cards in your Pendulum Zones cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. Then once you return a special slam on Dragon Slayer from your graveyard. Could you look at any Dynamist monster? And what its pendulum effect is? Could you read that? Dynamis Rex. Once, while this card is in your pendulum zones, you can negate an f- activated card effect that targets another Dynamis card you control and then destroy this card. Oh, that's it. Okay. So if you have that fusion out, you can negate anything you want with this card. Wait, what? Negate destruction. If you have the fusion out, he prevents your pendulum monsters from being destroyed by card effects. Oh, and then, right? yeah. And then he just continuously negates... Oh, well, once while he's in the zone. Yeah, so once while he's in the zone. He'll true. negate one, and it'll stay there. There's a... Man, there, he looks freaking awesome. The rank threes... Or the, the three scales have a different effect that can happen. Are they three six? Yeah, three six. So they're good. Ah, curses. Seven. So close. Yep. Okay, so close so to the dreaded unicorn. Kyle, what have you been doing? That's not all Matt's been doing. I've also been doing blue eyes stuff. Mm. They, they announced like a ton of new blue, like blue eyes this, blue eyes that. I don't know if you're using that kind of. New I stuff. don't like the so there's level one spellcasters, yeah. level one tuner spellcasters that replicate the maiden of the blue eyes and do like they just everything. They keep that summoning she didn't. themselves and adding themselves and, and adding blue eyes and pushing copies of things around and yeah. yeah, they they they're cool but they look really tedious and then they added all they're of not these. Mad. It, yeah, basically. They added all of these illegitimate blue eyes, like... Or, like, they can be treated as blue eyes kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, what, what was my word for them? They're, uh... It's, it's blue eyes fan service. Uh, what are you talking about? I will pull up... Well, I, I want Dark Magician stuff. I want a Dark Magician structure deck. I mean, the Dark... Oh, that's, that's the they already, dev from music. Yeah. I was like, what? They already did Dark Magician stuff. That stuff was... Did well, they? it was fun for me. I enjoyed it. Then I, That was I, only in... I, like, I want a structure deck. Uh, what? 
Blue Eyes is illegitimate son. It's called Blue Eyes Alternative Dragon. No, it's right called now. Blue Eyes Illegitimate Son. <laughs> Blue, <laughs> Eyes, Blue Eyes Illegitimate Son. Yeah. Blue Eyes Second. second but uh, no, like you said, Blue Eyes Alternative White Dragon. And then there is White Dragon Spirit that is always treated as a Blue Eyes card. Yeah, I think that one's kind of cool. It's like the most fun the card ever. The Ancient White Stone. And then there's Ancient White Stone, which is probably the most fun card ever. And uh, this deck has just been really awesome because yeah, it's kind of cool stuff. Very similar to the Dark Magician deck where I was using the Eye of Tamias <laughs> to summon fusions. <laughs> I'm using the Clar of Hermos to summon arguably worse fusions, but fusions that are more fun. <laughs> Red Eyes Black Dragon Sword. Yeah. The heck? So it, Red Eyes Black Dragon Sword has to be summoned with Clar of Hermos using a dragon type monster, which I mean blue eyes. So all of this blue eyes stuff is can't be special summoned by other ways. So you can't get it back. And if this card is special summoned, target one other face-up monster on the field, mandatory, equip this card <laughs> to it. It gains 1,000 attack and 500 attack and defense for each dragon monster on the field and in the graveyards. Uh, so wherever only there Matt are dragons. this card. <laughs> it's so good. It's a very mad card. It's I don't so like it. funny. Just, attack boosting isn't... I don't know. I've seen the way of Yu-Gi-Oh! Mm -hmm. And just blind attack boosts are not enough for me anymore. Attack! <laughs> it's not a blind attack. Dragon boost. Sword Slayer! What else does it do? The Claw of Hermos lets me discard any of the random dragon stuff that I have in my hand, and all of the blue eyes stuff either gets stuff back from the graveyard, or like the Ancient White Stone once mm -hmm. a return. During its end phase, or during this end phase, if this card is in the graveyard because it was sent there this turn, you can special summon one blue eyes monster from your deck. So you can summon any of the can blue eyes cards, it from the graveyard and then you can banish it, and then add one blue eyes monster from your graveyard to your hand. Mm. So putting that in the graveyard is great, and then white dragon spirit, which you can't do anything with in your hand. Is that is the stone a tuner? The stone is a level one tuner. Oh, good. Card of consonants. Yep. Yeah, I don't have it in here, but that's that's good. I forgot about that. Um, whoa, whoa. White dragon spirit is treated as a normal monster while it's in the hand or in the graveyard. Oh, good. And then when it's normal or special summoned, you can target a spell or trap card your opponent controls and banish it. Mm -hmm. And during either player's turn, if your opponent controls a monster, you can tribute this card and then special summon one blue eyes white dragon from your hand. So it's just really, really good, really <laughs> awesome. It's like super cool. And then uh, we will take a break because I'm being summoned. back. You mentioned that, that that one monster was treated as a normal monster, even in the Great Bird. Yep. And then I saw you were in that was a Dragon Shrine, I think it's called. Yep. So you can send him, and then it'll let you send another one because he's treated as a normal monster. Mm -hmm. Which makes, I always like that. Yeah, smart. I always thought of trying to do something with that Gemini monster from Heratix mm -hmm. that no one ever used, but because that's like the only way you can get it anywhere that matters. I was thinking about that card, but this card is just like just a better. better version. Yeah. <laughs> But then you can send him and the Stone of Awesomeness. That is true. Ugh. Things I would have to try myself. Yeah. And then uh, the rest of they also have a uh, an equip spell, the Light Guidance. If you don't control another Light Guidance, and you have three or more Blue Eyes monsters in your graveyard, activate this card by targeting yes. one Blue Eyes monster in your graveyard. Special summon it and equip it with this card, but its effects are negated. When this card leaves the field, banish that monster. And you're like, why would I ever use this card? Monsters you control cannot attack. Except the equipped monster. If you have a blue eyes monster in your graveyard, the equipped monster can attack a number of times, each battle phase equal to the number of blue eyes monsters in your graveyard. So you win the turn you play it. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I noticed you have some memories. Uh -huh. There's a quick play spell that just brings back a blue eyes from your graveyard. Oh, that's good. Yeah. What's called? Is know. it the flashing light thing or roar of blue eyes? Might be roar of blue eyes. Blue eyes. There's also I was reminded because like they've been doing a whole like renew an old thing mm -hmm. every uh, so uh, everything all the time, and they're making a Felgrand thing. Oh yeah, I saw like a super Felgrand dragon. And I think there's just a spell that brings back a level eight or higher dragon. Hmm. I always like the Felgrand dragon. Oh, it's like cry. Cry. That's crying the name. And they're doing like a Buster Blader renewal. Silver's Cry. 
Oh, it's just a dragon type normal monster. monster. Oh. It's better than single memories yes, exclusively for this deck, Elliot. Yes, it is. Mm. Silver What if on it? I mean, you can't do two in a turn, I guess. You can't. Mm. Why not? I mean, you can do two single memories. Oh, yeah. But not two silver scrap. The rareness. Silver scrap. Well, sorry. Yeah, so that's that's just what I've been doing. Dynamists. Uh, which are fun because their field spell prevents people from doing anything in the battle phase. And then blue eyes. Mm. Blue eyes. Blue eyes. What about you, Justin? Oh, uh, I've done like one thing. Oh. Uh, and that's Yosenju Kaiju. Hmm. Um, I don't. I mean, I have, it's been successful in like the few times I've used it. But. Where'd you get the cards from? Uh, Ka had most of them. I mean, you already have Yosenju, yeah, of already. course. I just had all the kaiju. Yep. They're all rare and common hmm. and inexpensive beyond reason. Yeah. Where'd you play? Uh, it's I, like a Monday. Yeah. I and once Monday. against Seth. I played once against Seth, a few times against Kyle, a few times against Rob. Hmm. Which Rob? Big uh, Rob. Big uh. Rob. And it worked. Speaking of Rob. Things that aren't on the podcast. Oh. Um, Is, will he be attending? Attending? Sure. Oh. <laughs> Is that a high possibility, I guess? I don't know. Oh. But, uh, well, he attended the last one. Uh, really? Yeah, he came up for that one. Wow. So it was uh, me, Kevin, Seth, and Rob. That's dedication. Yeah. From- we all kind of had, like, decks. That we, we didn't know anything. We just kind of had decks. Oh. And it worked out. Uh, I guess Seth did the best. Yeah, nobody was right. Well, he knew about his deck, so I guess that's not true. <laughs> he had Infernoids. He topped with Infernoids. Kevin topped. He, I think he would have done better, but he just gave. He just didn't want to play the last round, so he gave it to the last <laughs> guy. He just didn't. That, in true Kevin fashion, he scooped the last game. And he was using a deck that he had never used. It was li- yeah. He literally never ever used the deck before. Mm. And the cards he used weren't even his. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna butcher this guy's name. The famous Chinese strategist Shinsu. Shinsu, that sounds right. Yeah. Okay. Shinsu. All right. It's not Shinsu. It's Shinsuke. Is it Shinsu? It's not, it's <laughs> not Shinsu, and he has a book, right? Yeah. The Art of War. The Art of War. Oh, that guy. There's a uh, there's a there's a saying in the Art. Yeah. Of War. What is what's the saying? Um, if you know yourself and you know your enemy. You can it's fight Sun Tzu, yeah. You can find Sun Tzu. Uh, Sun Tzu. Sun you can fight a hundred battles and not be in doubt of the outcome. If you know yourself but not your enemy, for every battle you fight, you will lose a battle. And if you need know neither yourself nor your enemy, you will face catastrophe in every battle you fight. Not true in Kaiba. <laughs> not true. Not true for Kaiba. Not true for Kevin, and because he topped, <laughs> he knew neither his enemy or himself, <laughs> and he topped. Well, Yu-Gi-Oh! Is, uh, what, did, what did he use? What did he use? He used a combination of Magic Specters and the Structure Deck. The Pendulum yeah, that, Structure There was deck. one more thing that, that Sun Tzu said. Mm-hmm. If you use OP decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! It, none of this matters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you will thrive. You will thrive no matter what. No, if you use OP decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! A monkey could do the same. No, what he said was, Sun Tzu, his famous quote was, Pay to win. <laughs> <laughs> Pay to win. Well, no, I think well, Yu Gi Oh! I don't consider Yu Gi Oh! a pay to win game. I consider it to pay to enter a game. Pay to compete. Yeah, pay to compete. Which is. To worse. be on a level where you can pay, you can use skill to win, you have to pay a large sum of money. What a horrifying concept, and it's actually worse than pay to win. In a way. But like, if it was pay to win, you would just kind of win by paying to get the best deck. But if everybody pays to get the best deck, you've kind of entered that, the le- echelon, the level where you can compete on. You have the honor you of get to competing? Compete. Yeah, you get to compete because you pay. I'm paying hundreds of dollars, yeah. And so, like, if you play against someone else who has that deck, oh. the higher skill player should yes, win, theoretically. Good, yes. But not all the time, because some decks are Luck. degenerate. Luck. Like, if uh, Dark Wolves was the best deck, then it would just be completely dice rolly. Santa sucking. Tis the season. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, but, yeah, just, for me, just, uh, Yosenju Kaiju. And... Gross tricks of rotting in a quarter somewhere. Yeah, they're they're completely a negligible deck. They cannot 
possibly stand it up. It makes me so sad. There is so not. They don't stand a single chance. If they, if they were, if, decks. why is that? They're just, they're not good oh. enough. Why not? Like they could stall out against decks that used to exist, you but can't. now decks are so overbearing, so strong that you just get obliterated. You don't have like the how? resources. To what are you stop? gonna do? Like, well, first the two decks that exist right now before Bosch, pre Bosch, before things go insane. Wait, wait. So we're we're at insanity technically. So before things go like manic, over the edge, beyond insane. Yeah, beyond insane. Uh, the two big decks are one's called Pepe, which is like perform age uh, magicians, basically some variation of that, Cosmos. and uh, Cosmos. The B- the boss monsters of the Cosmos are unaffected by ghost tricks. Mm. So what am I gonna do? Like, and they literally are like one of the fastest OTK decks like ever. What essentially like whenever I'm playing against the bot, if they get to two Cosmos on the field, you get basically they can attack for over eight thousand. Jeez. It's not even hard. Cause, uh, so, like, they go, like, something that attacks, and the other one's a farm rule. And then they banish the other one to get a big ship. The farm rule attacks, gets the sh- get another ship, they get the big one that destroys the monster. They attack with their one ship, they banish the farm rule for the big ship. That one pops a monster, which pops their other ship to get them another monster from their deck. And they attack, and they attack again. So they attack, like, five times with two monsters. Jeez. And their monsters have just really high attack. Mm. And then things are, in general, kind of, like, unaffected by the battle phase in Cosmos. Because, like, the weenies can banish themselves to evade things. And the larger monsters are just unaffected. And then even if they are affected, the big ones, they summon a weenie from the deck. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess maybe Ghost Trick go around? No? Yes? It would work for a moment. Oh, the trap that allows you to manipulate the positions during the battle phase? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would flip them face down, but what does that do? Wait, like, you just, just gave them a giant beater that's a floater face down. Like, they they change, still can't get it off the board. Wouldn't they change the activation of Ghost Trick Go Around if you like were going to prevent them from doing something? Oh, it doesn't target. It doesn't target. Oh. That's its strength. Yes. The only thing that I could see myself doing against that deck is what I do against any other overbearing deck that I can't like win in a straight out fight. I flip all their monsters. No. I flip all their monsters face down. I use something like Swords of Stealing Light or Ghost Trick Knight and I attack directly for game. Mm-hmm. But the the thing with their deck is they run so many high level monsters that Tribute Summoning isn't like a difficulty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sucks. And they all still get like, there's the Slip Rider which is pretty much wreck your life. It's just, when it's summoned, you destroy a spell or trap. Uh, they never run out of resources because the yeah <laughs> no it's just the level five no and then their field spell makes it so that re- resources don't exist card advantage doesn't exist in the current meta mm-hmm. so Benjamin the monsters just inherently create a, like nearly infinite monster well that you draw from because the whole extra deck garbage mechanic <laughs> is bad bad you it's not Yu-Gi-Oh but uh that's my opinion of Pendulums is it's not Yu-Gi-Oh they took this other game and they transplanted it so how can I fight a bottomless card well with my deck I can't. Yeah, and then and then Cosmos the field spell is you can just keep adding once per you add one of your banished monsters to your hand, but you take some a little bit of damage. Hmm. You take the damage equal to level times one hundred. Mm-hmm. So like they can keep banishing the weenies and keep getting them back for free. So, and then all the big ones when they're destroyed, they banish themselves from the grave to summon from the deck. So that you can have an infinite monster well on that deck too. In the face of overwhelming advantage, Ghost Strix falls to their knees. Oh and. <laughs> Just so you're, you're like, oh, I'll just destroy the field spell. When the field spell is destroyed, it adds a Cosmo card from the deck to their hands. So. Cosmo card? Yeah, so you can add another copy of the field spell. Mm-hmm. At the worst. I mean, you can't really escape a galaxy, so. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, I thought I, w- I, I thought I was riding high. I thought I was big pimping with my uh, my ghost trick uh, monster, my Xyz monster that, like, adds, um, adds like, anything. But this this is just too much. This is This is something else. Of another order entirely. Mm-hmm. And Kyle, what have you been doing? So what have I been doing? Uh, so what? You reminded me. So, oh yeah, we were before that. Mm-hmm. It'll kind of segue into what I've been doing. The other deck against Ghost Tricks that exists, which mm-hmm. is basically just Pendulum decks. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's my variant, which summons a bunch of just like disgraceful monsters and doesn't allow you to play. <laughs> which, uh, in in the case of a Ghost Trix, they don't get to play. Mm-hmm. And you basically are given infinite spell and trap destruction in uh, the Magician deck, just by how it works. No. You're given infinite spell and trap destruction. Uh, so good. 
then the Pepe bill, I guess you'll call it, is based on just summoning a bunch of fours. And uh, it kind of just completely overwhelms the opponent. By like turn one, a lot of them summon like Nat Beast. Uh, what's it called? Omega. Stereo. No, I forgot what the thing is called. The archetype. Cyframe. Cyframe Omega. Oh. They summon like I've seen someone summon. Uh, they have King of Feral Imps, Nature Beast, Omega, and a Pallades turn one. Wow. Agreed. Like that's like that's how overwhelming that deck is. What an average opening. And then uh, they still have like three or four cards in hand. They still have scales and they have monsters in their extra deck. To some like, pendulum monsters in their extra what deck. What do you what do you do against that? Uh, you run the same deck. And you can get around that? Me? Uh, no, person running the same deck. Yeah, you can remove like the entire field from the face of the planet. Wow. I mean, the the deck is so is super aggressive, so they don't really run spells and traps. If they do, it's like you run like one warning, one bottomless. Because mm -hmm. those are only like good traps mm -hmm. to run uh, one ofs. Your monsters are your traps. Actually. Because, uh, gosh, what dumbest card in Yu-Gi-Oh! This is like a terrible card. Uh, Ignister Prominence, the Blasting Drago Slayer. Mm -hmm. So it's a right. level eight synchro. Sounds cool. Requiring any tuner and a pendulum non-tuner. Then uh, once per turn you can summon a Drago Slayer monster from your deck in defense, but you can't use it for synchro, which is kind of stupid. And then its other effect is you target a pendulum monster, or yeah, a pendulum monster in the on the field or in the pendulum zone, and then that's just the cost. And then you destroy the monster you targeted and shuffle any card on the field of the deck. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't target. That's one of the be biggest best ways to be Cosmos with the deck, because they summon a big ship. You can pop on your cards and shuffle the ship into the deck. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't target. But uh, you can target your opponent's pendulum cards to destroy theirs and then spin one of their cards. Mm -hmm. Which is insane. And it has 2850. So like, if you just summon this, you've decimated like half their field most of the time. Um, I mean, I guess the Nat Beast, you can't play around that unless you just have like the out in your hand. Usually it involves some form of summoning Castell. But you had to summon it like twice because they have the Pallades. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's like the ideal go first hand though for them, mm. and they'll just probably main phase beginning pick a card out of your hand so there's a smaller chance with Omega, mm. Mm. but that's not likely that they like whoever is doing that always does that. Mm. But I played against a guy who did that against me. <laughs> the final round, I was like, gosh, I keep opening terrible, so I'm just gonna go second, and then he just summoned a Nat Beast and all this mm. garbage on me. And I was like, okay, and then I drew all spells slash pendulum monsters in hand, and I was like, here you win. So my final, you got it. my final match took four turns, I think, something like that. Mm. It was interesting. <laughs> That's crazy. That was but bold. so deck I was running, I was running uh, just basically. But deck, what I've been doing, I guess, is just been using what I consider the most cancerous build of the pendulums and monsters I could run, mm. which is structure deck plus monsters that you don't nobody likes, like uh, Big Bird, Divine, Mace Valley. Apex Avian. Are you proud of yourself? No, I don't care. Hey man, this is like a resurgence of a deck that you made a while ago with like... Ninjas. Ninjas, and then Pendulums. And, and I literally made stuff. Magicians plus Apex Avian in the past. Mm. But the, remember, the old Magicians were bad. Yeah. But now they're good. Mm. And they have the same scales, so it's like, what's the point of that? And then Magic's Rugged Unicorn, uh, Kirin. For some reason they added, like the Japanese ones were just their name Magic Spectre plus their animal. But on ours, they all have like a name added on. So ours is Magic Spectre Unicorn Kirin. Isn't Kirin like Magical Horse? or? Yeah, unicorn? I think it's just the, the real, literally the name of the animal. And like Magic Spectre Raccoon Bunbuku. Oh. Buku Bucks. I don't have. I had. Rob had one of them, so I borrowed one copy of this. It's just when he summoned, you add a Magic Spectre card from your deck to your hand, which is broken. No, it's not that. It's not broken. It's not broken. Yeah, it's just uh, straight it's just It's it's just like Yu-Gi-Oh! Except it's like straight us that goes to your extra deck and comes back next turn and does adds it, another card. Does it prevent you from getting a copy of itself? No. Oh, so why don't we get back straight us? Yeah. Like, what's is there really a problem with summoning two Excaliburs turn one? No. I don't think so. Which Excalibur? I mean, like, oh, remember the two heroes? The 8,000. Hero, heroes. OTK. Like, yeah, whatever. Is there really a problem with that? No. Is there really a problem? And he also can't be destroyed by card effects or targeted by card effects. Oh, that's cool. But all the magic specters can. Mm. Uh, so my deck basically is just magicians, 
plus Unicorn plus Apex Avian plus Gay Kaijus and draw spells. Mm. Gay Kaijus. And then, and then I, have, I run the Odd Eyes Fusion because that just summons another monster that doesn't play Yu-Gi-Oh. Hmm. It summons a monster that negates a card once per turn. Oh, Wisdom Eye Magician. No. So proud of yourself. It's, I mean, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> interesting deck. It's better than what I was going to use. Uh, I was going to use, what's it called? Shadows? Fluffles. No, Fluffles oh, yeah. doesn't exist, man. Oh. I might, I would think about Shadows if Construct was at like one. You go. <laughs> but is that is banned and L is at one like so the problem with Shadows the reason why like I won't even like touch the deck is because you just can't get rid of the ships in Gaza you just can't there's just not a card in your deck that gets rid of a ship mm. um, you have to run traps that just get rid of it like a mirror force or like storm mirror force mm. and then it just becomes a game of did I draw them or not and then if you don't draw them, you just lose. So it's like you don't get a play no matter what mm. against Cosmos. It's just it's not worth it. Makes sense. Um, it, like I, I, I don't like it when my deck can't toolbox answers to every situation. I don't like running it. Like my only out is me drawing into a card that gets rid of it. Like oh, the only way I can get rid of like mistake, right? Like say like mistake hurts my deck. The only way I can get rid of it is if I draw Miss T. Like I don't want to run the deck like that. I want it to be like, well, I can manipulate my deck if I'm desperate to get to this and get rid of mistake. Like, that's, mm-hmm. I only like decks that work like that. Yep. And uh, the magician deck can play around like everything except for anti spell fragrance, but you who runs that? Anti spell fragrance? Yeah. You don't know what that card is? I was like, who runs that? Every anti meta deck that isn't pendulum deck or cosmos. Oh, the, the deck, if I could make any deck I wanted, I would just make Cosmos, because I like that deck the most. But that's way too expensive. This deck, my deck, worth nothing. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, I already just, had the big birds. Yeah, you did. And those aren't worth anything. At least they should uh, They are now. Oh. They're at least probably like 20 maybe $30. Bucks. Really? Yeah. Wow. For these previously pieces of toilet paper, mm-hmm. you can get a quick $20 bill. Mm-hmm. Um, then obviously there's just three of every structure deck monster the kaijus are worth maybe 50 cents the unicorn is maybe worth 50 cents and the only things that weren't in a structure deck were the fusion which is a secret and the secret rare fusion monster you summon off of it and those are like maybe 20 a piece though and the rest is just stuff that you get for free <laughs> like literally the MSTs are in the structure deck <laughs> sacred sword of seven stars is in the structure deck wow I don't even know if... I might take that card out. It's just filler, because I don't want... I want there to be less cards that aren't broken cards in my deck. Mm-hmm. And that's one less card what in my deck. Reason? Yeah. For a while, I tested Upstart and that, but I just replaced Upstart with more cards that I wanted. Once the next set comes out, MSTs will just be better MST. What are you going to... You mean uh, Bosch? Yeah. Once Bosch comes out, I'll just run Twin Twister, because I don't want to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Stupid card. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, the reason... If you ask me why I'm running certain cards in this deck, it's just my answer would probably be because I don't want to play Yu Gi Oh! Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, why are you running Kaiju? It's because I don't want to play Yu Gi Oh! I don't want to play against your cards. I you just want your cards. You just, I just want your cards to go away. There was literally, there was one guy, he was playing, uh, I played against a guy running, Ooh. gosh, what's that? Those Beerums. Destroy by Bow, summon another one from your deck. Oh, you mean, uh. Yang Zing. And I was like, man, I don't want to play against this guy. So I literally summoned a kaiju, bounced it with Unicorn until he ran out of Yang Zing. So I was like, I don't want to play. <laughs> I just tributed his Yang Zing summit for kaiju. So I just I didn't want to attack him. I was like, I don't want to play you. Mm. And I did that until he had no cards left, and then I kept attacking with Unicorn <laughs> until he lost. I was like, there you go. Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't yeah, want to like play Yu-Gi-Oh against you. You like, you like decks that you can just like manipulate to just do degenerate stuff like that if you want to? Yeah, I just, yeah. Oh. Right. Super degenerate card that ended up being degenerate. This is like the most degenerate card in the deck. Number thirty nine, Utopia Beyond. Oh, some guy dumb. first yeah. round. Some guy summons this oh, wait, against no, me, and I I wasn't prepared for this card. I didn't know it existed. And he summoned it, and I was like, Oh my goodness, that is the best Yu Gi Oh card ever. <laughs> it's just a rank six generic rank six. When it's summoned, all your opponent's monsters' attacks become zero. Okay, and that's all that matters. The other effect involves you having Utopia monsters, which oh. I don't run. Oh. Like, you literally just... There's so many games where you just go like, oh, they have two monsters on board, I win. Like, Let's attack them. Yeah, like, 
For example, you run Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon. If it attacks a monster, it does double battle damage. So it does 5,000 if it attacks a zero attack <laughs> monster. And then, conveniently enough, Utopia has the extra 3,000 that's left. Okay, yeah, there you go. So 8,000. They had two monsters. It's game over. He's huge! Yeah, Yugi's got a lot bigger. Yugi's the cat. He's huge! Oh my goodness. He, she, it. He is... He slash she is the man slash girl now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, was the, but the OTK the guy did against me round one was he used uh, Utopia Beyond and the stupidest this card is bad uh, Perform Mage or yeah Perform Mage Trapeze Magician requires two spellcasters and then uh, it randomly has like a you never lose to burn dex effect where you t- never take damage if it is less than this card's attack I remember that that's I so remember, random I remember, but, uh, I remember talking about it it's other effect is you can detach a material being either your player's main phase to target a monster and it can attack twice and then it's destroyed at the end of the battle phase. So oh, get him. if you summon this and Utopia Beyond, you make Utopia Beyond attack twice, and that's more than 8,000. Oh, really? How much attack is has Utopia Beyond? 3,000. Oh, right. It has 3,000 attacks. So that's an easy OT. So if you get two sixes and two fours on the field, you attack for game. Uh, I mean, There's so many dumb things that have made me attack for game with Utopia Beyond. It's just not even cool. Good. It makes it way too easy to attack. Because, like, especially because if the game just progresses past, like, turn four, every turn past there, you just have, like, more monsters coming out of your extra deck for no reason. So you're just getting more monsters every turn. Mm. So if you get past turn four, you basically have the requirements to OTK anybody through any field. Even my three mirror forces and two D-Rhythms? Uh, you don't have those face down on turn four. They've been destroyed... And I, if I have Big Bird, I probably, on turn four, I pretty much am guaranteed a Vortex Dragon, which negates anything. <laughs> what the hell is Vortex Dragon? It's the fusion monster that you, because uh, the field spell searches any Odd Eyes card, and I run one Odd Eyes fusion. And Vortex Dragon, return, once return, returns a pen, face a Pendulum monster from your extra deck to the deck to negate anything. Oh. Well, then. And then obviously Big Bird is Big Bird. Big Bird, Big Bird. Return to hand to negate anything. Yeah. And uh, I just summon it back every turn. Yeah, and then uh, the one scale guy is once per turn basically destroy a spell or trap. It's making me uh, really sad. Hey man, I didn't do too great. Why? Because better there's this deck is not a good deck. Okay. Little did I, you know. I told Matt earlier that uh, any deck that isn't one of the meta decks gets brutally oppressed by my deck. It doesn't get to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh-huh. And then uh, oh, it's up there. But uh, any the good decks brutally oppress this deck. But I tried my best to make it like better. Like the kaijus basically turn cosmos into a non-existent deck. Because they got, oh, they got this monster that they want to banish at the sign. Any sign of me doing anything to summon another monster, <laughs> oh, now it's gone. And they got this monster that can't be targeted that summons them from more from the deck if it's destroyed. I'm like, oh, now it's gone. Like, Good. And then uh, the, I ran the sticky string kaiju, humongous. It's level seven, and this deck has like the best rank seven ever. The sticky string? Have you seen this card, Matt? Odd Eyes, Absolute Dragon. I don't remember what it does, but I remember really liking it. I remember really saying that I would use any card that has Absolute in the name. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it's a rank 7, we're going to two 7s. Uh, 2800 attack, 25 defense, that's pretty good. And then, uh, if any monster declares an attack, you can detach an Xyz material to negate the attack and summon an Odd Eyes monster from your hand or graveyard. So pretty good. Usually you use an Odd Eyes when you make it. Like a Odd Eyes uh, b- 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 Pendulum Dragon. Oh man. This could be a catastrophe. Uh-huh. No, catastrophe. And uh, so uh, you can, by just summoning, you can attack with Ignite Gates on attack and bring back one of the material. That's pretty good. Mm. At the very least, that's pretty good. But then uh, if it's sent to the graveyard. Oh, if this, I was going to say, can I just send it from the extra deck? But no. Uh, if it's Xyz summon card is sent to the graveyard special summon any odd eyes monster from your extra deck other than another copy of himself and uh literally for first turns what I've done is I've like specialed this and then tributed over it and then you can summon the vortex dragon the one that negates anything mm-hmm. from your extra deck using that mm-hmm. and uh that's good yeah I won't deny that that's oppressing ridiculous. people is good Ugh. this deck is oppressive and then one of the th- this, this card I'll talk about this card real quick. The Wavering Eyes. So stupid. This, is, this card, I really hope they ban this card. It's really bad for the game. It's 
It's what they do. Kyle? I figured it was a common too. I was like, yeah, this is. It's a common, common, and it was also a super rare and one of those like ones where they pre give you cards from oh, the next set. Things, yeah. Uh, so wavering eyes destroy as many cards in each player's pendulum zone as possible. It's a quick play spell. Uh, and then apply the following effects in sequence depending on the number of cards you destroyed one or more your opponent takes 500 two or more add a pendulum monster from your deck to your hand three or more banish a card on the field and then four you add a wavering artist to your deck to your hand Ugh. it Why? just makes it's not even um, an aggressive move to like impede your opponent from doing things it's like pendulum monsters you want to be destroyed now so I'll destroy theirs and get them away from me for a turn but then when I destroy my pendulum monsters, I get things. It's and just, then I banish a card. And then I get another one of these to do it later. Yeah. It's created this really, really, like, degenerate thing. It's acceleration. Thing That's what it is. In the game. Or this, what happens is, like, it's quick play, so both people just are running it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then... <laughs> are we going to go through this? I don't know. Justin complains about Yugi. Yugi being the cat. Yeah, Yugi is eating food. Right next to our place of business. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh. And I stopped because you could feel everyone looking at him. So the problem with Wavering Eyes, they have a set card, right? Face down. Oh, yeah. And you have. And you're, you're like, I want to play my pendulum scales. And they already have their pendulum scales up. And then if I play two scales to pendulum summon and they play their Wavering Eyes face down, I'll lose both of my scales. They'll banish one of my cards. And they'll get another Wavering Eyes to their hand, right? Yep. So it's like you lose, you pretty much lose the duel if they do that. Yeah. What's a picture of wavering eyes look like? Looks stupid. Yeah, sure. Um, and then, so then it becomes like, well, I won't play my scales unless I also have a wavering eyes in hand. Uh, yeah, so because if they activate it first, if they activate wavering eyes and I chain it. wavering eyes, I win the duel. Yeah. Inst- I like instantly win the duel. Yeah. Like, and that's what. I, but then. This, the third layer comes down. Uh, perform Age Damage Juggler. If a card inflicts battle damage to a player, you can discard it from your hand to negate and destroy that card. Mm-hmm. And everybody's running that card. So now, now you can go Wavering Eyes, and they're like, Chain Wavering Eyes, and they're like, Chain Damage Juggler. And it's just in their hand. You can't predict it. Oh. And they negated yours, and now their first Wavering Eyes resolves anyway. And now they win <laughs> again. <laughs> And they get like a huge plus. So they get another waiver and eyes, which seals the game in the future. Mm. Their damage juggler goes to the grave, and you can banish damage juggler to add any Wait. performance from your, your hand. Solemn strike. That no, that doesn't negate no. spells and traps. It negates monster effects. Yeah, it could negate the damage. But I mean, if you're going second, you lose. Mm. Like you have to, you have to sur- bring in the, the comeback has to come now, or the game is <laughs> over. The game is over. Done. They've already set up. You lose if, and then if you so you don't do anything. You set some cards, or like during the end phase, they can just wave very nice <laughs> and just get free stuff. Like, mm-hmm. there's, there's just, there's just, there isn't a good way to play around the card at all. No, nope. the best way to play around the card is itself, which is bad. Yep, it just creates this scenario. It's one of those cards where people who play in a pendulum mirror will ask, like, do the gentleman's agreement? Like, I'll sign him out if you sign him out. Mm. Like, I had a guy do that for me. He's like, you want to start it out? But I shouldn't have. Because he had like all these good things for my deck and his side deck. I was like, oh mm. no. And I didn't have things in my side deck. Because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I just I built this deck like the day before pretty much. Not not literally. I had minor experience with the deck. I knew the mechanics. If I didn't know what my cards did and I had to read them before the tournament, I don't know if I could have won any games. Oh man. Too much stuff is happening in this deck. All the time. Plays get better or worse depending on how good you are. But uh, that's that's what I've been doing. We made it. We did. We did. Uh, well, now we technically have ten minutes left. Oh, we're only doing an hour. We're only doing an hour. I didn't know that. Yeah, I said it. He did say it. Well, then I guess I'll get another hour of talk going. Kaiju's. Now we'll talk about the TCG exclusives from the next set. Okay, there we go. Um, naturally, more Kai, there were Cosmos. I don't know if we had, actually ended up talking about them in a previous podcast, maybe. I, like, maybe a little, but know. not all of the new ones if they're making a ton of new um, ones. Oh, uh, let's see, one, two. Three, Red Eyes Retro Dragon? Five. So, That's speaking cool. of Red Eyes Retro Dragon, we'll go there. That's actually the OCG import. 
Mm. So we got a bunch of OCG imports like we usually do, which is uh, we got Performa Pal, Pendulum Sorcerer, Broken Card, uh, Fiendish Rhino Warrior, which is that uh, Burning Abyss card. If you've seen people run it, where I'll, I'll open it. Uh, the Neftabis, the Atlantean Prince, Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon, I like that card. Chimera, Cyber Dragon Infinity, the Red Eyes Retro Dragon, he just talked about. Dharma Eyes Magician. Ooh, that's a cool name. It's all right. Black Luster Soldier, Sacred Soldier, Awakened Gaia, the Fierce Knight, and then the Trap Tricks, Rafflesia. I don't know huh. how to say that, but that guy's good. So those are the uh, imports. I guess I'll go through this real quick. These are, a lot of these are meta defining. That's but the Retro Dragon, I don't recall it being that spectacular. Oh. It's just in that realm of now they don't make cards that are really bad. They're just like, everything is usable, but they're not broken. Like if it's not broken, you can't you can't <laughs> win with this. Level four Dark Dragon, seventeen hundred. If a level seven or lower Red Eyes monster you control, other than Black Chick, is destroyed by your opponent's attack or card effect and sent to your graveyard, special summon this card from your hand in defense. And if you do, special summon as many possible of the destroyed monsters in the same battle position they were destroyed in. Uh, then you contribute this card and normal summon a red eyes monster during your main phase's turn, in addition to your normal summoner set. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. It's alright. Yeah, it's alright. Uh, broken card, broken card, infinity. Talk about that and this card. Okay, I'll go through some of these. So we got the fiendish rhino warrior. This is an interesting card. This is the burning abyss, the sweet. Oh, it's kind of interesting. Speaking of burning abyss, before the ban list dropped, there was a uh, a build of burning abyss that was like showing its showing itself to be like the good one. That I thought was really interesting. I think you would appreciate it. It was running an Absolute King Jackback. Nice. Uh, which is like, I believe, when it's sent to the graveyard, you look at the top three. Jack the Buckle. And you rearrange them, and then during either pleasure, you can banish it to mill the top card of your deck. And if it's a trap, you can set it and activate it that turn. And they would run that plus uh, Fiend Grieving. And for I didn't think Jackback was a Fiend, but it's actually a Fiend. So you can send Fiend Grieving, shuffles a monster from your opponent's graveyard to the deck and sends a fiend from your deck to the graveyard. Mm -hmm. So they can send Jack back or a uh, Burning Abyss monster. And they just ran a mess of traps in it mm. with Jack back. That makes sense. And then, so like when they look at the top three they can be like, oh there's like I want this Burning Abyss on top so I can mill it during their turn in like the middle of their play and do something. Oh, so close to the power button. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I licked it dry. And then, uh, I don't know, it was an interesting build. It doesn't work because of the the Burning Abyss monsters going to two and one. It's just not consistent enough to run all that bonus stuff. Mm. But this new card makes it more interesting. <gasps> uh, it's Fiendish Rhino Warrior is a level three Fiend Earth. 1400 attack, 900 defense. Its effect, continuous effect. Fiend type monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects except for Fiendish Rhino Warrior. So that means you can special summon all the Burning Abyss monsters and they won't be destroyed if you control a non-Burning Abyss monster while he's on the field. Hmm. Good. And then if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can send a fiend from your deck to the graveyard. And you can only use this effect once per turn. Hmm. So it just perfect mills the Burning Abyss monster you want when he's sent from anywhere to the graveyard. He's the ideal monster to summon off of a tour guide, but tour guides at one now. Sad day. So that's a good card. Mm, but this for a not that good deck anymore. Oh, this broken card. What Perform a pal pendulum sorcerer. Oh. This card is gonna this is one of the cards that kinda like breaks the game. Good. Uh he has a pendulum effect, doesn't matter. Because we need more of those. Yeah. His monster effect is when this card is special summoned, target up to two cards you control and destroy them, and if you do add Perform a pal monsters with different names from your deck to your hand, equal to the number of cards you destroyed. Oh wow, well, searching. Of the highest order. Is there anything you want to destroy? You can just destroy pendulum monsters, can't you? Or uh, you just destroy your scales usually. Yeah. And then just add to stuff. It's just like super duper free advantage. And then there's a bunch of cards that get effects when they're destroyed that are pendulum monsters now. Mm -hmm. And so you pop them. You basically go like uh, at least plus two whenever you special summon this card. Everything comes together. And then since it's a pendulum monster, it just goes to the extra deck. 
Like, if things go sour, it just goes back to the extra deck, and you can summon it again next turn and blow yes. out two more cards. Everything falls neatly into place. It's a Ziga Rare. Get ready oh. for, I'm going to guess, probably like 50 to $100 for each one. More fifty. Has oh. there been a card worth a hundred dollars? Yeah. yeah, Dark Destroyer was a hundred dollars. What? Cosmo Dark Destroyer. Oh, was? Yeah. The deck is falling out of favor because Yu-Gi-Oh is getting better than that deck. Wow. Mm. Well, until the you like that. Until People the theorize that once the set comes out, that Cosmos won't be a big meta threat mm. because they'll be surpassed. Already. I theorize your defeat. But I think they'll. I think they'll adapt. I think they'll change their deck build to adapt to the meta. They will adapt and they will survive. Uh, next we got this guy. I thought it was a girl when I first saw it, but definitely a prince. Ooh. Neftibus, the Atlantean prince. prince. It's an ultra rare. Ultra rares are easier to get because yes. the new pack will have the new rarities. Nefertito. <laughs> no, you don't get it. Neferpito. Yeah, Neferpito. What's that from? Here we go, Hunter X Hunter. Uh, that's what it is. You win. So uh, it's a level one sea serpent, eight hundred tags. Does it look like him? No, not even no. a little piece of cat. I know. Uh, it's you can send an Atlantean monster from your deck to the graveyard, other than itself, to add an Atlantean card from your deck to your hand, other than itself. Broken? No, it's not broken. So it sends any Atlantean from your deck as a cost, which activates their effect. Yes, and then you also add any Atlantean card, mm -hmm. which there's also that c crazy Atlantean quick play spell, which is just special summon like three level Call three or lower. Atlanteans. Yeah, I think that's funny. But uh, basically, you send dragoons to add dragoons because why wouldn't you do that? Mm -hmm. I don't have an answer to that question. And then if this card is sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster's effect, so if it's sent as a cost for a water monster's effect, you target an Atlantean in your graveyard and uh, special summon it. Hmm. And then you can only use each effect once per turn. How cute. So you can use them both once, but you can't use... I don't know. In new Yu-Gi-Oh, they're more lenient. The fact that it's... Oh, power button's coming. Oh, no, never mind. Uh, the fact that it... Like, they've gotten so, more, so much more lenient. In old Yu-Gi-Oh, it would only say you can only use one, one effect once. Effect once per turn, yep. No. But, no, no, now it's better. And then on top of that, its first effect, you can use it every turn it remains in the field. Mm -hmm. Send an Atlantean to get an Atlantean. That's crazy. Does that put them over the top? No, because they don't pendulum summon. Just not good enough. What are they going to do? To, 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 to destroy one pendulum card? Yeah, it's like if I literally it? just like summon five pendulum monsters in defense, which is very feasible in pendulum decks. Because usually what you do is you try to like funnel them into something that makes you win instantly. Oh. But instead, if I just decide, you know what, I'm just going to put them all in defense. Though everyone's worst fear who's playing like a not meta deck. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they not, the game's the, over. They do the, the boring, not flashy option that's actually terrifying for your deck. <laughs> yeah, like, oh no, infinite monsters. <laughs> They're here. It's like, what is this? A wall of monsters that are free that I can't get through in one turn? I've lived in the <laughs> ocean. I can't fight a coral reef. Yeah. And after you've like stalled them out forever, you can just like slowly start like, you know, maybe I'll pendulum one of them. I mean, maybe I'll maybe I'll exceed one of them together. And just leave but four other ones in defense. I mean, oh. three other ones in defense. There we go. <laughs> it was biting my screen. <laughs> <laughs> He's fascinated by the heat. He's I guess. Yeah, I know. It's probably putting out lots of heat. Uh, mm, terrifying. Cyber Dragon Infinity, we'll talk about yep. it really quick. Its effect is uh, it gains 200 attack for every material it has. Okay. Which it usually comes out at like 25. 27. Uh, 27 is easy, but 25 is like. If you summon it with uh, Batalamias, it comes out 25. Because it'll have Ptolemyus, Nova, that's it. If well, you summon I mean, it with a Nova in the normal way, it'll have three material, which is 27. Mm -hmm. So you'll have the two fives, Nova, and Infinity. Yeah. So when I, when you probably, you've been using Dynamis, so you typically summon it with three material. Yep. And I've been using Pendulum deck, which summons it with Ptolemyus, so I see it with 25. But uh, it's other, and then it's uh, once per turn you can target a face-up attack position monster in the field and attach it to this card as material. Like you can even attach your own, which I've done. Yeah, I like I was like, gosh, I don't want this on the field anymore. I'm like, no. And you can eat their monsters. You'd think it would be special summoned, but it's just attack mode monsters. Yeah. It's just good. Then it's the, the be all end all effect is uh, once per turn during either player's turn. When anything is activated, detach, negate, destroy. Yay. Fairness. Almost fairness. Yeah. And these last two we'll talk about just because they're here. Yeah, we've got a minute left. For Fleecia? Oh. Black Luster Soldier, Sacred Soldier. 
I don't know. I, I literally don't know what this card's going to do. It's a level 8 Light Warrior 3025, same as BLS. Uh, when this card is normal or special summoned, Good. target one of your banished light or dark monsters and one card your opponent controls. Return the first to the graveyard, and then if you do banish the second, you can only use this effect once per turn. That's crazy. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, target a level 7 or lower warrior in your graveyard and add it to your hand. That's all right. You just want it, like I said before, good usable card, not broken, not viable. Okay. And we'll last one quick. Then we got this card. This is a meta card. Every deck oh. will probably be running this in some form. Rank 4, plant, 300 attack, 2500 defense. This card is unaffected by trap effects while it has Xyz material. Trap tricks monsters you control, except for Rafflesia, cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. Okay. Your opponent cannot target trap tricks monsters you control, except for Rafflesia with card effects. Once per turn, during either player's turn, detach an Xyz material from this card and send a whole trap card that meets its activation requirements from your deck to the graveyard. This card's effect becomes that trap card's effect when that card's activated. Ah. It becomes holes. Oh, it is a giant. It's, it's yeah. a hole. Mm -hmm. I've been Makes testing sense. a lot of decks online where I just run. Uh, my only traps are treacherous and bottomless. Hmm. And you just summon this. That's pretty good. Yeah, you get them. Yeah, get them. Get them. Oh, very Wait, cool. Does treacherous resolve even if there's other traps in here? Uh, I feel like it does by the wording. I looked at it, but I wasn't sure. I think you just can't activate it. Test. Yeah, it just says you can't activate it if you have traps. But this card's. It becomes the effect of that card when it would be activated, you, not the preventative activation yeah. condition. The thing about that, though, is Dang like go. when you run multiple treacherous, the odds of you drawing into one are like you'll draw into one, but you might have one in the graveyard already, so it's kind of pointless. You might as well just do the one one. Yeah, it's terrible. But a uh, void drop, not void, void time space travel is very popular right now. It's the pseudo replacement until Solemn Strike comes out. Right. Giant trap hole. Bad. Dang it. Gemini trap hole. Bad. Time Space Trap Hole is the Trap Hole of choice at the moment, what? which is uh, when a monster is summoned from the hand or extra attack, pay a thousand for each monster that was summoned and spend them to the deck. Chaos Trap Hole? Nope. Oh. Okay, well, that is it. You are bottomless? Even. Time Space. We made it. Yeah, we made it to the end of the Spy Size Podcast. Through Time and Space, we have made it. Yep. We have returned. Maybe next time we'll talk about a full the full chit -chat. Suite. The sweet of the, the pack. Yeah. We won't be so vain as to talk about ourselves. <laughs> I mean, it's been so long. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. been a hard day's night. Well, thank you guys for joining me. Both I done. appreciate you uh, coming out and doing this podcast. It's been a while. I've Beatles. enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, for the Yu Gi Oh! Card Game yeah. Podcast, I'm Matt Carter. Oliver. And I'm Justin Bell. And enough expository banter. Yeah. Thank you guys for listening. We'll be playing some regionals. We'll be back. Or should I say...